Decision for Life. Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. Take your Bible, if you will, and look with me on this Father's Day to Matthew chapter number 5. Uh, Matthew chapter 5. We're going to be looking at uh, the most pivotal, I think, of all of uh, the Beatitudes. And I think it's extremely fitting on this uh, holiday that you and I are celebrating together. But uh, the fact of the matter is not limited just to fathers. Although I think it's uh, extremely applicable, it's not limited to just fathers. I think it would cross the board for uh, all of us uh, to be together. Do you, have, you, uh, have you noticed our culture today is a lot more different than any other culture that's ever existed? Uh, people are enamored with their appearance. I, I mean, it, it's just amazing to me uh, how much cosmetics are sold and bought. Uh, it's amazing to me... Uh, the photography industry, that cell phone, selfies, my word. We, we take pictures of ourselves doing everything nowadays. It's incredible how people are just enamored with how they look. Uh, oh, I'm too thin or I'm too heavy or uh, I'm not pretty. And, and, and everybody's just concerned about how they look. But you know, the fact of the matter is God's not concerned about your outward appearance. He's not concerned about how much money that you accumulate. He's not concerned about how much possessions that you muster up during your lifetime or your career or how many successes that you have uh, in this life. Let me tell you what God is concerned about. Uh, he makes it real clear in 1 Samuel chapter 16 when he says that man looks on the outward, but God looks at the heart. And then in the New Testament now, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 8, Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they are the ones that are going to see God. Now, what does pure in heart stand for? What does it mean? Does it mean sinless? No, absolutely not. If it meant sinless, uh, you and I wouldn't have a half a hallelujah chance of ever seeing God. Uh, it does not mean perfect. Nobody that I know of has ever lived perfect. None of us in this room anyway. So we wouldn't be able to see God. Does it mean without fault? Absolutely not. So what does it really mean? Well, uh, what this is, is a passage that really says, blessed are those who walk in integrity. That, it's a better translation. Uh, than pure in heart, who walk in integrity, for they shall see God. So it begs the question then, if integrity is not sinless, if integrity is not perfection, then what is um, integrity? It comes a, a powerful word uh, that has several meanings behind it that I just want to kind of identify with you. First of all, uh, it means to be undivided undivided. We also have the Greek word that is in there that uh, uh, this word comes uh, also could be integration. Uh, it, it, it's the opposite of the word segregation. It means to be undivided. It means to be whole. It means to be without fractions, if you will. And, and in other words, uh, our life is to be whole. It's to be complete. It's not to be Divided, And yet, most people today live a very divided life when it comes to integrity and their walk with God. Uh, I liken it kind of like a house with a lot of rooms in it. And, and, and over here is our room for our career, and we're going to kind of live uh, a life over there that uh, is conducive to our work life. And then uh, there is our church life. And, and, and we're going to be one way when we're in church that may not necessarily reflect the same kind of person we are over here in this career. And then we have a social room that we live in. And then we have a, uh, a room for our sex life that is over here that may be different uh, than uh, the way that we live uh, over here in our 
our, our career life. And, and then there is that family room that, uh, in, in other words, it looks a whole lot different. And we look a whole lot different when we are with our family than we do when we are at our work. And we look a whole lot more different in our family than maybe we even look like when we are at church. And so the Bible is telling us here, if we're going to see God, we've got to be pure in heart. We've got to be the same way in every room. We've got to be the same person at work that we are at church. We've got to be the same work in our social life as we are in our family life. There needs to be no discrepancies. It should be all uh, the same. Uh, no changes, no pretense, and no masks. The second word that I want to give you is the word uh, unpretensive. Uh, that's a big word, but what it literally means is that you are real, that you are authentic, that you are genuine. You're not a fake. You're not a phony. You're still uh, the same in it there. Now, when I was in college, I did everything that I possibly could to avoid taking a foreign language. I, I'm not a linguist at all. I mean, I just struggled. Uh, I loved English and I, I, I did well in English. Uh, but boy, I just could not grasp uh, how to deal with foreign languages. And so I, I wound up right at the last minute having to take classical Greek uh, to satisfy the demands for my degree. In classical Greek... Uh, we studied a lot of the trilogies and a lot of the plays and a lot of the tragedies. Uh, now, when there would be a play given, one actor may play multiple parts. And he would come out during the drama and uh, he would play this particular part wearing this particular mask. And then uh, there would be an act change and he would go back into behind the curtains and he would change masks and he would come out and he would play an entirely different character. He may play three or four different parts. Now, they have a unique word for it. We call it acting. We call it actors. Here's what they called it. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. Uh, they were never the same. They had pretense about them. Uh, they acted in different parts and in different roles. Integrity means that you are living a genuine, real life and you're not pretending to be something that you're not. There's a third word that I want to give you. It's the word unmixed in why you do what you do. Uh, in other words, you do the right things, but you also do the right things for the right reasons. I'll give you a crude illustration. If you're called on to pray in a public forum, uh, in the midst of your praying, uh, you're not praying to impress the people that are around you. You are praying in communication to God. Prayer is the right thing, but you've got to do it for the right reasons. Reasons. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, when you talk about a walk of integrity, it means who you are when no one else is looking. Who you are when no one else is around. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 2, the Bible says that God hates a person with a perverted heart or with a perverse heart, a heart that is deceitful a heart that is fakey, a heart that is phony. And he later says that not only does he hate that person uh, that has a heart that is phony, he blesses the heart in that same chapter. He blesses the heart of a person that really is walking in their integrity. Now, I want us to look at that first word in uh, chapter 5, verse 8, blessed. And I want us to see what comes with that to us personally, okay? Uh, what, what does it mean if I am walking in integrity? What does it mean that God is going to bless my life? Well, let me give you a few things. First of all, uh, we are going to be blessed with the right 
confidence. Integrity means that you are walking with the right confidence. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 9, the Bible says, He who walks with integrity walks securely. Now, back when I was in high school, and I do remember that far back, uh, but back when I was in high school, back in the mid-1960s, we had a major snowstorm down in uh, the northern, northwestern part of South Carolina where I lived. It snowed every Wednesday for five straight Wednesdays. Started out with a big old sheet of ice, and uh, then it snowed on top of that, and then we had more ice and more snow and more ice and more snow, and, and it was about two feet deep, and you literally could walk on the top of it. But it was slick as ice could be. I can't tell you the numbers of times my feet went out from under me and I just flopped. Uh, and and you, you had to take gingerly, had to just walk very slowly, very gingerly across that. Or else you would fall and you would slip. I watched many folks have a hard time just navigating. But the Bible says that if you're walking in your integrity... Every step that you take won't be the first false step that you can walk on good foundation and you can walk securely because you are not having any pretense, you're not a phony, and you're not a fake, and you're not wearing a mask, and the Bible says your steps will be in great confidence. But he tells us something else about this. He tells us, too, that if you're walking in your integrity, it will keep you on the right course. It will keep you going in the right uh, direction. In Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 3, the Bible says the integrity of the upright will guide them. In other words, God says, I will show you what you are to do next. Uh, we had graduation here Friday night uh, for Metrolina Christian and had uh, about a hundred uh, sets of parents that watched their kids get their diploma. Many of them, and I talked to some even today, many of them are now facing the empty nest. Uh, their, their kids are, 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 are flying out of the nest right now and going all kinds of different directions. And they're asking the questions, well, what are we going to do now? What's next for us? Well, I'm going to tell you, when my kids left, I just shouted, glory to God, hallelujah. I, I was just praising the Lord, you know. Uh, at this COVID-19, uh, I've watched uh, several people lose their source of income. I, I watched them lose their jobs. And, and they, they were wondering, okay, I, I've given it my best for all of these years. What's ahead for me now? What's next for me now? And, and, and the real answer is this. If you're walking in integrity, you don't have to wonder and worry about what the next step is in your life. That integrity with the Lord will keep you going in the right direction. Why is that? Because when you're walking in integrity, when you're real, when you're genuine, when you're not a fake, your view of God doesn't get clogged up by a bunch of junk and a bunch of garbage and you have a clear focus of who he is to be able to see his plan and his purpose for your life. Your integrity gives you great confidence. It'll keep you on the right course. Let me give you number two. You ready for this one? Your integrity outlives your possessions. Powerful statement, isn't it? Now, most of us get to thinking, okay, um, how long am I going to be able in the workforce? Uh, what do I got to do to uh, make sure that when I retire, I have enough coming in and, and we, we, we want to make sure that, you know, we're going to leave our kids something uh, when God calls us home. Well, let me help you with some of that. Your possessions and your money when the hands of your kids are going to fly right out the window. They're going to pack a big old, uh, they, they're going to park a big old uh, dumpster up at your house and they're going to load it up with all of that stuff that you thought was so very important. And they're going to throw away all of the trophies <laughs> that you have won in this life. But let me tell you what's going to outlive 
your bank account. Let me tell you what's going to outlive your retirement. Let me tell you what's going to outlive your possessions. And that is your integrity. I've got a thing on my wall uh, going in the garage, going into my house that my kids have had to read for at least 22 years. And at the bottom of that list of things that they had to memorize is a scripture passage, uh, Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 21. And it says the words, and, and by the way, let me just help you. Um, this passage has helped me get through a lot of dark days in the last three to four weeks. And it said, the words that I have put in you, I have put in your children and your children's children forever. Your integrity is going to far outlive your possessions. In Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 7, the Bible says the righteous man walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after him. Now, moms and dads, let me share something with you. Uh, you're not perfect. Matter of fact, I can tell you unequivocally right now that the most difficult task that God has ever assigned to me is that the role of a daddy. Uh, and, and we make lots of mistakes. But thank God in the midst of uh, our decisions, there were a lot of good decisions. And there were a lot of good choices that made. And your kids are going to be the recipients of those good choices and those good decisions. And I dare say there's some of you right now that the thought went through your mind, uh, either here watching uh, over the internet or here presently, that said, you know what? Uh, boy, I made a lot of bad decisions. I made a lot of bad choices. And I lost my integrity uh, with some of those choices that I made in my life. Well, I've got good news for you. Thank God life is not over yet. The final uh, sentence to the story of your life has not been written yet. And it's never too late for you to go before God and say, God, please forgive me of these bad choices and bad decisions, this sin in my life, and wipe it clean and start all over. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, without a doubt, some of the bad choices and decisions that I made in my life along the way, God is now using them to help me end and write the final chapter of my life in a life of integrity that is better than it ever would have been without it. You can start over. You can be forgiven. You can finish well. Let me give you the third. Integrity gives you eternal prizes. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21, <clears throat> the Bible says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many things. And so what I'd like to ask you to do is to highlight two words out of that scripture passage, few and many. Now, the real issue is we don't have a hard time at all walking in integrity in the midst of the big deals of life. When it's a big deal, when it's a big issue, uh, when it's an important thing, you know, we got this mindset, well, I'm going to do the right thing. Uh, I'm going to have integrity about this. But I want to tell you this, you are no more with God than who you are in secret. You are no more with God than who you are in private. You are no more with God than who you are when no one's looking. And so he says to us, life is made up of a lot of little things. And when you're faithful in those little things, in those few things, then I'm going to make you ruler over many things, big things, mighty things, um, I want to remind all of us this morning. What he's talking about here in this verse is that God has a ledger. And he's keeping stock. And he's keeping an account of our life. And he's saying to all of us, you need to walk integrity when no one's looking as much as you walk integrity when everybody's aware. Be the same every day. 
Don't wear a mask. Don't be a phony. Don't have pretense. God says, I'm watching. Now, how do you walk in integrity? How do you get a life of integrity? Well, I'm glad you ask. So turn in your Bible, if you would, to Psalm chapter number 15. Psalm chapter 15, if you would. And I want us to look at uh, that entire chapter. Psalm chapter 15, beginning in verse 1. So he asks this question in verse 1. He says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Now, let me just kind of give you a modern day translation of that. How many people want to walk close to God? How many people want the presence of the Holy Spirit? How many people want to have an intimate relationship uh, with God? So that's the question in verse 1. And so he begins to answer it now in verse number 2. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart, he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doth these things shall never uh, be moved. So if you want to walk in integrity, uh, you want to go through life uh, walking in confidence. Uh, if you want uh, the direction of your life to be made clear and God reveal to you what's next, uh, he's given us about eight things here uh, in this chapter five, 15. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all eight of them, but I do want to talk about four or five of them for a few minutes on how you can walk in integrity. And, and it simply means that if you want every room of your house to be whole, if you want every room in your house to be consistent, if you want to be the same at home as you are at church, if you want to be the same at work as you are at home or at church, uh, here is kind of a short checklist uh, that will help you kind of get started. Number one, be a promise keeper. Be a promise keeper. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 14 says that a promise breaker is like um, the rain clouds that come from the horizon and, and they are giving the promise of a benefit of uh, a special soaking kind of rain. But once they get here, it never rains and there's no benefit to it at all. It's nothing but a bunch of smoke uh, and mirrors. That, that's how he describes a uh, promise breaker. Now, I know it's Father's Day, and, and I want to give you just a little family help to all of you parents that are here this morning. Hear me a minute. The number one cause of the root of bitterness that springs up in your kids that creates rebellion, without a doubt, is broken promises. When you promise that you're going to do something for them or with them or to them and you never follow through. We're, we're, listen, next month we're going to go down to Disney World. And, and now, now what they did and you said if everything works out, you even may use the phrase, if everything works out all right. Well, let me tell you what happened in the minds of your kids. Immediately they said, we're going to Disney World. Picked up the phone, called their friends. We're going to Disney World. Went underneath their bed, pulled out the suitcase, started throwing stuff in. It may be a month, but they've already decided my dad and mom promised we were going to Disney World. Or you made a promise that uh, you, you were going to buy them a particular item and, and, and you go to the store to pick it up and you discover while you are there that it costs a whole lot more than what you thought. And you come to the conclusion, I can't afford that. Verse number four, the Bible says, even if it causes hurt, you better make sure you keep your promise. Be a promise keeper. 
don't be a promise breaker. Now, how many of you have made some promises to your kids that you have not followed through with? How many of you have made a promise to your wife that you didn't keep? Let me go just drill just a little bit deeper. How many of you have made a commitment to God that you have not kept? Be a promise keeper. Number two, be a bill payer. Be a bill payer. payer. Listen, look this way a minute. Everybody in the building, look this way. You ready? Financial integrity is a big deal with God. How do I know that? 2,500 times in the word of God, he gives us instructions and talks to us about how you and I as his children are to handle the possessions that he has entrusted to us. Financial integrity is a big deal with God. I want to ask you a question. Do you spend more money than you make? If that's true, you don't have integrity. Do you borrow more money than you're able to pay off? If that's true, then you don't have integrity. The Bible says in Psalm 37 that a wicked man, now notice the term, a wicked man borrows money that he does not pay back. In Romans chapter 13, uh, Paul writing some major instructions about us in verse 13 and verse, uh, chapter 13 and verses 6 and 7, he says to us that you and I as responsible citizens are to pay taxes to the government. If you're going to have integrity, then you have to pay taxes. You say, well, huh, my government doesn't walk in financial integrity, so why should I give my money to them for them to use it in a fashion like that. Well, may I say to you, how they use it does not relieve us of the responsibility that God has laid on us to be people of integrity in paying our taxes. All right? So we're to be promise keepers. We're to be bill payers. And we are to refuse to be a gossiper. It sure has been quiet in here all morning long. I think COVID has robbed every one of you uh, from remembering to say amen when it calls to say amen. So I want everybody in the room right now just to say amen real loud. Amen. All right, now that you remember, put it where it's supposed to go. So we're to refuse to be a gossiper. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 13, the Bible says, A talebearer reveals secrets, but he who is of a faithful spirit conceals a matter. How many of y'all remember Preacher Reese and Mary Riggins uh, in our church uh, a few years ago? Would you hold your hand up just a minute? They, they were here. Uh, some of the most beautiful people that you'd ever want. He was a retired pastor, joined here back in the 80s. And, was here 20, 25 years before he went on to be the Lord. His wife was in an assisted living center, uh, actually where my mom is right now. And uh, I, I loved going down there to visit with her. Uh, she, she was just a brilliant mind, uh, probably read through the Bible more than any other person that I've ever known. And uh, she would tell us about life uh, and as a newlywed with her husband and how that uh, she would sew and go to work every day and she would take a little bit of her money and she would squirrel it away that he didn't know anything about it and, and because he, was a, he, he spent a lot of money and, and she wanted to save. So she said, anyway, I was sitting down there in, in a room one day on the couch and she said, hey, preacher, can you keep a secret? I said, Miss Mary, you know that I'm uh, a confident person and uh, I, I would never. Uh... She said, no, can, can you keep a secret? I said, yes, ma'am, I can keep a secret. And she looked at me with that twinkle in her eye and that little wry smile and she said, so can I. <laughs> he, 
it, you know, ladies and gentlemen, what, what the word is teaching us here in Psalm 15 is don't, don't get in somebody's face and butter them up and smooth over them and make them think that they are the most important person in all of your life and then get behind their back and either listen to somebody gossip about them or you yourself join in the gossip. Don't be a gossiper. And then let's go a step further. The Bible says, uh, and I, I'll just leave you with this before I go into number four. Proverbs 10, 18. Whoever spreads gossip is a fool. Strong words. Um, number four. Be a fool. You think it was quiet up until this point? Wait till I start on this one. Be a faithful tither. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart uh, be also. Malachi 3 is the more familiar passage of the scripture that asks the question, uh, will somebody rob God? And the question comes back, well, how in the world have we robbed God? And God says, you robbed me with tithes and in offerings. Bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. Prove me, put me to the test, says the Lord, that if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing so great that you won't be able to contain it. And if that's not good enough, God says, I will also rebuke the devourer for your sake. We got it all wrong about this thing about tithing. You say, well, I should have tithed last week because my washing machine tore up and my car broke down, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. So, 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 so God, God didn't have anything to do with it. Let me tell you what happens. When you rob God of tithes and offerings, that hedge of protection that God puts around our lives through our faithfulness is then taken down and then the enemy comes and he tears your washing machine up. He tears your car up. He makes things break. He comes in and destroys. That's what he does. But when we tithe, the Bible says, I will put a hedge of protection around you so that the enemy can't come in and destroy what I've blessed you with. Don't mean to be mean and ugly. I'm just, this is just a statement. I, I just believe it's a bunch of coward Christians that don't tithe, that are afraid to trust God. All right? I told you you'd get quiet. Number five, and I'm going to close with this one. Be a hard worker. Be a hard worker. Um, on the wall of my garage in that plaque that my kids had to memorize before they could come in and eat. Um, first is love God. Family first. Work hard. It's there, isn't it, Brooke? You've seen it. Work hard. Taught my kids that. Let me, let, me tell you what, let me tell you what the Bible says. In Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 9, sloppy work is as bad as vandalism. Now we've been sitting, watching on television, rioters and looters and going in on innocent people's businesses and destroying them and major acts of vandalism and we've sat and we have decried what they have been doing and, and, and here's the deal God's word's really clear and plain and he says if you don't give a good eight hours work for a good eight hours pay you're as bad or worse than a vandal you may hate your job with a passion. But in the name of Jesus, if you're going to please God and walk in integrity, you've got to give that job an eight hours hard work for an eight hours pay. Why 
how in the world do you expect to win your boss to Jesus when you're a sloppy worker? You don't show up on time. You leave early. You don't do a good job while you're there. How in the world do you expect to be a good witness to the people that you're working with if you're not carrying your own weight? God says to us, be a good worker. Let, let me read you one final passage of scripture. In Psalm 119.9, we started out with, with, with Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Psalm 119.9 says, how can I keep my life pure? By taking heed according to my word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. If you're going to walk in integrity... If you want to have every step secure and safe, if you want to know how to take that next step in life, we're to walk in integrity. How do you walk in integrity? You stay in the Word of God and you put the Word of God in your life and you brand it in there so that your view of God is clear and open and transparent so that you don't have any trouble whatsoever knowing where to go next. Blessed are the pure in heart who walk in integrity because they're able to keep a clear view of who God is. I don't know about you, but I need that in my life. I want that in my life. I yearn for that in my life. I yearn for that for you. But you can't live one way at work and another way at home you can't live one way at home and another way at church. You can't compartmentalize your social life and say, you know what, this is my free time. This is my independent time. You can't have a little secret room over here in your life that nobody knows about. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing. God knows about it. And he said, be sure your sin will find you out. But if you want to be in integrity, there can't be any fractions. Your life has to be whole and transparent. Would you stand with me and let's pray together. <clears throat> Father God, I thank you for the privilege that we have to dig into your word for a few minutes. Uh, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move among us during this invitation. I pray that everybody would realize and know how important of a time that this is when people are determining what they're going to do with the rest of their life. And God, would you get glory in it? Would you woo people? Would you draw people? Would you bring people to a personal level of conviction so that they can turn away from any inconsistencies uh, in their life and Lord be whole. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fbcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.